Oh, hello there, and welcome to another episode of... <laughs> you from the gilding. Okay, as ever, timestamps down below. The paintings will be a little further on. First of all, I'm just going to talk about the usual news. So, yeah, I've just had half term. So the school that I work for were off, so I was off. Um, so the first few days I spent painting and then I did various uh, other things. Uh, went into town to see the Jubilee uh, celebrations. Um, me and Vanessa went over to our brother's place and we had a jolly good time. Went to see my parents uh, also, a jolly good time. Um, and I've done some writing as well. Um, so, oh, I also got a cold. Um, so that's why I didn't do the um, live stream I was planning to do, uh, mead and ale. Um, I bought all the ales, I was all ready to go, and um, yeah, I just wasn't uh, feeling up to it. So I drank the ales uh, sitting in the corner on my own, uh, gently weeping. Um, <clears throat> but I will do another one uh, at some point, a uh, live stream that is. May have to wait until some holidays though, because it's tricky to fit in. But you never know, I might do one, but I'll let you know if I do. Um, right, so yes, um, I've started writing again after almost a uh, one year hiatus. So I decided last year that I was just going to focus on painting. So I did it to the exclusion of all other creative pursuits. Um, and I think it was good. I think I needed that solid year of practice. But I feel quite comfortable now in my painting. So I thought, let's get back into writing tentatively. I don't know if you'll remember, but last year I was working on a collection of short stories, science fiction, uh, kind of dark science fiction stories. I wrote three of them. Um, and and then I got part way through writing two more, but I never finished them. So anyway, I thought, just get back into it. Um, so I need a needed to crowbar that back into my daily routine, which I have quite nicely. So this new story is totally different, or a totally new one. Um, and I'll just I'll just talk briefly about it because I was quite excited about it. But anyway, it's a, it's it, it's a it's about an invasion, an alien invasion. Obviously, that's done quite often in um, science fiction. But I I wanted to imagine it from the standpoint of an invasion where the aliens are completely indifferent to humanity um, and and what they do is so beyond our understanding that it just is completely weird so it's all it's it's written from the standpoint of like the last surviving man um, on earth so that's it's quite interesting perhaps nothing entirely new but it's largely inspired by uh, those books I've talked about recently, like um, Roadside Picnic and the uh, Sudden Reach trilogy. So it's a bit a bit of that, doing a bit of that. I've almost finished editing that one. Um, so what I was going to do is uh, I was going to make some very short audio books, free ones that you could um, listen to. Uh, but I'm, what I may have to do is, is publish the whole thing, this short collection of short stories first so that it's copyright protected because someone could just uh, nick it, I suppose, uh, if they were desperate enough. Um, and, you know, uh, I don't know where I would stand with that. I'm sure locking it on here would be enough to warrant um, t uh, copywriting my material, but you never know. There's some dastardly bastards out there. Um, right, that's that, writing. Um, yeah, the other thing is I bought a book. Um, off eBay. <laughs> Look at this little bugger. Um, it's the Ladybird um, abridged version of Gulliver's Travels. Now we had this book as children um, and I'd totally forgotten about it until I read uh, Gulliver's Travels recently as I said the other day. Look at that. That's the, that's the, um, the cover, the inside cover image. Bloody lovely. But as I remembered from from back in the day. The illustrations are absolutely wonderful. Look at that. I kind of wish I'd read this version actually instead of that, that really tricky um, 
a Brit, um, full version, the old English version. Look at that one. I remember that quite well. Wonderfully illustrated. Uh, who is it illustrated by? I don't think it says. But whoever did it is absolutely brilliant. Uh, illustrations by Martin H. Aitchison. This is a 1976 edition. It might be the original one, actually. It was only a fiver on eBay. I'll tell you what I did, though. The, the seller, it was a private seller, um, they agreed to take a little bit off it because there was damage. <clears throat> um, and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll return the favour. Check out my paintings and I'll, I'll knock off 10 quid. Didn't hear anything back. <laughs> but, you know, you've got to try these things. Okay, anyway, let's let's cut the crap. Let's get on to the painting. So this time I'm not going to show you them in the physical form because as you've probably noticed before, this camera doesn't really do them justice. So I'm going to go straight to it and just bang them up here. So the first one is the skull painting. Now, um, if, if any of you watched any of the live painting sessions or the speeded up ones, we started with this abstract background um, and I thought that was going to be okay in its own right. But no, I thought we need a bloody skull in there. So, yes, we stuck a skull on there. That was the that was the, one of the first um, live painting things. No, it was, it was the last one. Yeah, the last one I did. So we stuck a skull, a skull in there. But I always envisaged it should have some flowers uh, populated around it. So... Here we are. This is how it finally looked. Um, now, I, took, I, I used a, a very tentative reference for the flowers. I don't even know what flower it was. It was a tropical flower, but I just used the basic shape of it. And there were so many flowers I had to put in. I made a rod for my own back and it just became tedious trying to faithfully portray a particular flower. So I did a, a kind of um, a pastiche of that particular flower. And then and then I stuck those, um, um, what do you call it, the, the those red tendrils coming out. I totally made that up. It didn't exist on the previous flower. But there we are. There's a word for that thing. It's not, what is it? I don't know. Um, yeah, so there we are. That's um, Scully. Uh, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what it was called. But anyway, uh, cheers to Adam, uh, Vanessa's brother. He bought this one. Uh, good man. Um, yeah, I was quite pleased with it. Um, what do you think? Yeah, nice colours. Um, perhaps I think well, the the style of those flowers I think is quite it's slightly looser. Um, uh, rendering of the flowers works well within that composition. I suppose I could have done them a lot more detailed, but it would have taken forever. And uh, I think it looks perfectly fine like that. Anyway, right. Next. This is another one that I've altered. So if you remember last time I showed you this uh, abstract, pure abstract painting that I called Fluty because my flute twatted the head of it uh, last time, if you remember correctly. Um, and I, I thought, I kept looking and I thought it needs something more. So I've done this to it. Um, yeah, just put a lot more detail over the top using those basic structures from the abstract composition to inform these various tendrils and shapes, lots of triangles and squiggles, all kinds of things. I kind of did a, a doodle over the top in some ways. But uh I think it works and I think it's far more interesting than the previous one. Um, lots of things going on, lots of things to look at and explore. Um, so I may list this one now. I, I think I listed it briefly on eBay, but no one really looked at it. But uh, yeah, this this may sell. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I, one thing I will say, I've, I've sold hardly next to nothing um, the last three months. Um, other than uh, Adam, thank thank you very much. Uh, we bought another one of mine as well, actually. Um, uh, the the stone and the the nude that one. Uh, other than that, um, I haven't sold anything for three months, and I think it's just the economic downturn, lots of uncertainty. People have less money, even though my paintings are very cheap compared to a lot of stuff out there. I've, art is perhaps one of the last things people want to buy during these dark times. Although they should be getting some art because it'll make you feel happy. 
But anyway, yeah, so it doesn't matter anyway. Um, the paintings are there and they may go eventually. Um, right, next off is a painting that I've called Arrival. So I'll stick up this first one. This is um, a painting I did in one session over the top of a previous painting. It was, a, it was an abstract painting I didn't really know what I was going to do with. Um, and I just did this thing over the top just completely randomly. Again, a, a sort of doodle, I suppose. And whilst it looks very flat um, and not particularly um, striking, I saw there was potential. So what I did then, if I bring up the next one, I put in this central light source and used that to inform the, the planes that surrounded it to give it some uh, uh, free dimensionality. Um, in fact, the, the central light source didn't exist, but I, I imagined it was in the middle. And then in the end, I decided to make it into this ball of energy. I've called it Arrival because to me, it looks like a very strange spaceship coming into um, a, a planet, a planet surface, because the background now looks like like some continents upon an ocean, perhaps. I think it's also because I'm writing about an invasion of very strange um, spaceships, so maybe it was that. Anyway, that's Arrival. Okay, so the, the very last one is one that I'm calling Peekaboo. Um, and it's another one of my uh, uh, portrait paintings, um, another Japanese um, uh, girl. Um, and this one I did in two dip, two sittings um, over the top of uh, an abstract background that I've done in the past. I didn't really have much fun doing this. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I enjoyed doing the, the face um, and the hair. That was quite straightforward. The hard bit was doing the clothes and the hands specifically because I got to the point where I just wanted to get it done. Um, and... I don't know, I lost, not, I kind of lost interest, but also my wrist was aching and I was just, I just couldn't be bothered. Um, and, and this material that I was trying to replicate, it didn't actually look that in the, re look, look like that in the reference, but I, I made it fluffier. And I, and again, I made a rod for my own back because once I started, I had to fluff up the whole bloody thing. So anyway, there we are. That's peekaboo. Um, that's all for now. Um, I may do some more portraits soon just to keep my hand in, but um, I've been a bit more interested in doing abstract stuff lately. Uh, no hope of it ever selling, of course, but um, I just enjoy it. So at the moment, I'm just going to dally around with a bit more abstract stuff. But um, I've got some other projects in the mix. Um, I also got a, a, a commission out of the blue the other day, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen yet. But I'll let you know. OK, let's leave it there for now. Um, and I'll be back soon. I've got something interesting planned, actually. Um, uh, I've got a documentary um, that I really love, and I've watched it a few times. I'd like to watch it with you. Um, and it's uh, about one of my favourite um, artists. We can watch it together and get sloshed. Yeah? Sound like fun? OK, so I'll do that another day. I'm not sure when. Um, time to go. Um, say good. By when you were talking about the flower earlier, I believe you were referring to the stamen, comprised of the antha and the filament. You complete and utter delinquent. Now fuck off. <laughs> Cheerio.